Hello, everyone. We're going to get started in just a second. So hold on tight. We're just going to wait another minute to allow for some more people to join. Thank you so much. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Hello everyone, my name is Lisa and thank you for joining our webinar on elements of a great Giving Tuesday campaign video. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with Mighty Cause, before we get into diving deep into video and how to create a Giving Tuesday video, uh, just a little bit about Mighty Cause. We do run a Giving Tuesday event every year. However, we are also a year round uh, fundraising platform for organizations. We provide tools that you can use year round, not only for your Giving Tuesday fundraising, but for anything that you need um, throughout the year or any other tools that um, you may need for your organization, such as peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, embeddable forms, um, integrations with Salesforce and MailChimp. So we try to provide a platform so that uh, it's easy to use for any organization and it will help you accomplish any of your fundraising needs. Um, I also just wanted to quickly shout out our social media uh, accounts. Uh, please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, and LinkedIn. And the reason I'm shouting those out is because all of our webinars, we actually share that on our social media accounts. So if you want to stay up to date with what we have going on, any events we have, we also try to share any tips uh, for fundraising on there as well, please feel free to follow us and we share all of that information on there as well. Okay, so let's get into uh, the power of video and how to create a Giving Tuesday video. So for today's agenda, we are going to be going over the power of video, why video is so impactful for Giving Tuesday, how to get started in creating a Giving Tuesday campaign video, some easy filming and editing tips so that you can make a successful campaign video. I'll also be showing you some examples just to um, get you thinking about the type of video that you want to create. And then at the end, we're going to be going over through any questions that you have. In your Zoom panel, there is a questions and answer section. So as I'm going through this webinar, please feel free to ask your questions in there and at the end, we'll be answering them. So to get started, the power of video. So social media is really the heart of Giving Tuesday. Um, Giving Tuesday was really born out of social media. It was created as a response to other buying events like Black Friday and Cyber Monday. And it's really an opportunity for donors around that time to, instead of opening their wallet up and buying a material item, to choose to spend that money on a cause they feel really passionate about or a cause in their community that they feel will be really impactful. So Giving Tuesday is really built for social media. And so that's why it's so important for organizations to really harness that power in order to make a big impact on this really important day. So how does video play into that? Why is video something that can be really important for a marketing strategy when it comes to Giving Tuesday? Well, give, videos are a really great way to give donors insight into what your organization is all about. It allows you to change up your messaging and share donor, donors a new insight as to what your organization, as noted here, is really all about and what your mission is. So it's a really great storytelling device and it also increases social media engagement on Giving Tuesday. As I noted, Giving Tuesday was created as a response to Black Friday and Cyber Monday. So during that time of the year, donors are inundated with messages, not only from other nonprofits, but also from other companies that are really vying for their dollars. 
Um, so a video is the ability to differentiate yourself and again, increase social media engagement. One also really important factor to video is that it allows you to improve your social media algorithm. So any social media platform that you utilize has an algorithm that chooses what viewers see at what time. It's the way that they can curate their content and have people come stay engaged and use their social media platform. So Facebook and Instagram's algorithm in particular loves video and actually prioritize them in users' feeds. If you are a user of YouTube or Facebook or Instagram, you may have noticed that you've been seeing a lot more reels and stories and short videos, and that's not by accident. That's very purposeful. Those platforms are trying to drive users um, to see that content because they find that users are more engaged with that content. So by creating a video, you're actually getting more organic or unpaid reach. And if you are choosing to pay for advertising on social media platforms, then you're going to get more bang for your buck because how much they prioritize video on their platforms. Okay, so now that we've talked about why video is so impactful and can be really important, let's get started on actually creating your video. So before you take out a camera or your smartphone, before you hit play, you want to first think about the message that you want to share in your video. Have clear and concise talking points, and that will actually help you create and execute your video. So write a list of bullet points of things you want covered in your video and stick to the most important points. So one of the traps that nonprofits can run into is when you're asked to talk about your nonprofit, you want to convey everything about your nonprofit, all the programs and services and all the statistics. And with a video, you don't need to share all of that history. You really want to stick to the most important facts and points that you're trying to get across. So for those of you who are struggling of thinking of what are your exact talking points, I have a challenge for you. And you can do this challenge now, or you can do it after this webinar. But I want you to answer each one of these questions in one brief sentence. Now, this may be difficult for some of you. So what does my nonprofit do? What would a donation, how would a donation affect my organization? And how can a donor support my organization? So again, each should be one brief sentence. And if you're having trouble making it really concise, a little tip, how would you describe your organization to a child? So if you were going to answer these questions and you were going to answer it to a child, how would you do so? Um, that's really helpful in making your answers sh super short and sweet. So once you have these answers, that will actually really help you in brainstorming and storyboarding what type of video that you want to create and what you want to get across. So once you've written down everything that you want to convey in your video, what are your key points? You want to get together everything that you'll actually need to film your video. And it's actually not a lot. So you're going to need some sort of filming device. This can be a smartphone or a video camera. And we'll get to that in a little second. You're going to need editing software. We'll also be talking about that a little further down. And some optional things that you may or may not need is a microphone. And that can depend on if you're doing voiceover or if you're interviewing someone and a selfie stick or tripod um, somewhere where you can place a camera. If you, again, if you're planning on interviewing someone or filming yourself, et cetera. Now, as you see, it's a concise list of things that you'll need. It's not that many stuff that you actually need to create a Giving Tuesday video. So use what you have. You don't need a complicated camera in order to film a video. Um, smartphones actually have really amazing cameras nowadays. 
and they're actually really excellent and can be used to film Giving Tuesday video. And actually, um, expensive cameras only really work well if you know how to use them. Um, they actually may not work well if you don't know how to use them because they're complicated machinery. So if you're worried that you don't have an expensive camera, you don't have a DSLR, no worries. You can shoot your video on a smartphone if that's the only thing that you have available. Now, if you are a little concerned about actually the process of making a video, you're not that technologically savvy, um, this isn't really your domain, um, but you think this is a really cool idea and you think it can be really helpful, I um, would really encourage that you ask for help. Don't shy away from asking for volunteer help. You know, see who in your organization or even in your network can help create a Giving Tuesday video. So send out an email for potential volunteers and also advertise on social media and on your website. Um, you can have a dedicated area on your website where maybe there's other things for Giving Tuesday or in general for your organization you need volunteer help for. Feel free to add to your website that information. And also a really great resource is volunteermatch.org. Uh, so Volunteer Match, it's free to use. You can post any volunteer opportunities that your organization has. And I really encourage you, if you really do need help to utilize volunteermatch.org, um, you'll be surprised how many people are looking to support an organization in their area or to support a cause in the area. From personal experience, I actually am a volunteer at an organization from volunteermatch.org. I create their graphic content for social media. And I just went to volunteermatch.org and found an organization in my area that had a posting looking for someone. Um, they needed help in creating um, graphics for their organization. And I really was also um, bonded with their cause. So there's really no harm in posting that. If that's something, if you need additional help, I really encourage you to ask for it if you need it. Okay, so let's get into some filming and editing tips. So before you also hit record on your camera, you're going to have to scope out where exactly you're going to film and your location can actually really be important to the quality of your video. So when you are scoping out where to film, really consider the lighting in where you want to film. So the sun is actually one of the best light resources for video. Natural light is typically known as the best light for videos. So windows are actually a really good natural light resource. So that doesn't mean to film in front of a, a window. You actually don't want to film in front of a video, but you want to film in a room that does have a lot of natural sunlight coming in through it. Um, if you can, morning and evening is actually the best time to film because light is softer at that time. Now, if you can't shoot in the morning or evening, that's perfectly fine. You can shoot in midday or afternoon. If the lighting is really harsh and you're finding that it's impacting the video, if you have a transparent curtain or a shower curtain or something that could filter the light a little bit, that also works perfectly fine. One thing to also consider is to avoid overhead lighting. Um, so really harsh lighting that is directly above you. And the reason why you want to avoid overhead lighting is that it can actually cast really unflattering shadows on your subject's face if you're interviewing someone or yourself. So any shadows that are on you or behind you can be really distracting on film. So really try to position your lighting so that you aren't seeing a lot of shadows again behind you or on you. So that's why natural light is typically known as the best light. 
Okay, so once you have your lighting down packed, so the next thing to consider is your audio. And audio sometimes is more important than the filming itself uh, because bad audio can immediately have someone turn off your video. I'm sure we, you've all experienced this when you've clicked on a video on social media or someone's um, family home video and the audio is very jarring. You just want to turn it off. It's just, um, it doesn't sound great. So if you are planning on using audio as you are filming, make sure that you are testing out your audio prior to the actual filming um, because there's actually in our day-to-day -day lives, there's a lot of noises going on in the background that you don't really notice in your day-to-day -day life. However, when you film it, you really do then notice the refrigerator running in the background, the fan, the television in the background. So you wanna make sure that you're testing all of that out um, so that, again, if you're interviewing someone or you're even filming, again, anything with audio, that you are um, making sure that you're in a good place for that. If for some reason you are using a camera and your or your smartphone is the audio is coming out really fuzzy or grainy, um, you may want to consider purchasing a microphone. Um, again, it may not be necessary, uh, but you know, if you're for some reason the audio is not coming out the way that you want. Um, you may want to consider it. There are a lot of adapters for uh, microphone adapters for your uh, smartphone that are pretty affordable. Um, again, not necessarily you need it, but something to consider if you're having trouble with your audio on a camera you're using, for example. If you are planning on having someone speak or you yourself are speaking, you want to make sure that your microphone is as close to the subject as possible. So, for example, if you are filming yourself or someone else, as I mentioned, and you've placed and you're using your smartphone and you've placed your smartphone really far back so that you are have a wide shot that you're seeing the whole room. Well, if you're placing the camera really far back, then people might not be able to hear what the person is saying, or it may seem very far away. So if possible, you wanna make sure that the microphone that you're using is as close to whoever's speaking. If you are planning on creating a video that has voiceover, um, then you can utilize actually headphones with built-in microphones such as um, most commonly the Apple headphones that have a built-in microphone. Um, some headphone mics are very delicate. So again, you wanna test it out before recording. Um, sometimes if you're outside and it's windy or you tend to move a lot, um, the microphone can actually pick all of that up. So you wanna make sure that you're testing all of that out before you actually begin the filming process. And if possible, I recommend avoid recording audio outside. As I noted um, just a minute ago, there is a lot of external noises that can come up when you're filming, especially when you're outside. Now, this isn't always the case. If there's a really quiet outdoor area that you can find, um, that's great. However, sometimes the sound of cars going by, um, you know, trains, etc. any external noises, they can be distracting. So I typically recommend just avoiding audio outside. Also wind is a big one as well. Um, that can be really easily picked up on microphones. So that's why if you are planning on using audio from your video, I recommend just to not do it outside. Now you can film outside, but that audio might not be the best to utilize in a video. Okay, so when it comes to filming your actual video, uh, once you've gotten the lighting down and you have the audio, when you're filming it, you really wanna avoid shaky footage. 
Um, so shaky footage is also an additional thing that can be really distracting from a video when you're watching it. If you don't have a steady place where you can place your smartphone or camera, consider investing in a selfie stick or a tripod. Um, those are actually pretty inexpensive. You can find them on Amazon. You can find them really in any retail store. Um, and as I said, they're pretty inexpensive and you can also use them in your personal life as well. Uh, but if you are planning on interviewing someone or you want to, or you're recording yourself and you don't have a good place where you can hold your camera still, then invest in a selfie stick or a tripod and it will be really helpful. Um, and it also helps position the camera higher as well and it will look so much better in your videos. So as you also start filming your campaign video, Something else to consider is how you are exactly orienting your smartphone if that's what you're doing. So you want to think about what are you filming this for? What platform are you filming this for? So for example, uh, TikTok, Instagram Reels, Insta Stories, uh, those platforms are really um, meant for vertical filming. Um, so filming when your camera is upright, like as you normally use your phone. However, uh, if you want to upload your video on YouTube or you're making a Facebook video or something that would be an Instagram post, um, then you wanna film your video horizontally. So you want to orient your camera horizontal, like you see in the image here. Um, now, if for some reason you accidentally film the wrong way um, or you orient it not the way that you want, it's not the end of the world. Um, however, what can occur when you do film vertically for a platform that is ideal for horizontal is in the image in the right hand side that you see. Um, this is a video that was filmed vertically but as you see, there is a, a black frame to the side of it because if you're, again, adding it to YouTube or Facebook or Instagram when you're editing it, you have to fill the space. So that's why filming horizontally for those types of platforms are best because then it will fill the frame that you're trying to create. Um, again, not the end of the world. If you do this, it's just a stylistic thing that you want to consider if you don't want your video to have those frames. Okay, so when it comes to editing, um, you want to keep your video really short because people's attention spans are very short. And that's also the trend for most social media videos nowadays. Um, in general, most social media platforms also typically have a limitation as to how long your video can be. For example, on Instagram and Twitter, you want to stick to a one minute video. And to be honest, that's really the amount of time that you need. Um, if you want something longer, if you are want to post on YouTube as well, um, I would say at max five minutes. Um, now you can actually create several different versions of a video. So perhaps you want to create a longer version that you want to upload to YouTube and you want to put on your fundraising page. That's great. And as you're editing, you can actually make a shorter version that goes on Instagram and Twitter. Um, that's a really great solution. Um, but yeah, you want to, I would say as short as possible. As I mentioned previously, you want to make sure that your talking points are clear and concise. So you may be wondering, well, where can I actually edit my video? Um, how do I do that? So there are actually tons of great apps and editing tools that are available for you to utilize. Some are free, some are paid subscription. Canva is an amazing resource. It is free and it has a paid subscription based on certain features that you may need. So that's a really great tool that you can actually utilize now for video editing. 
Animoto is also a really great tool for creating a video. They basically do the editing for you and you just drag and drop the content, the video or the photos that you had and they'll really build the video for you. Um, so that's a really great easy tool if you really want to do minimal, minimal editing um, on your video. YouTube editor. YouTube actually has an editing system. So when you upload a video, you can actually then edit it through YouTube. Um, so if you need to make a quick and easy edit, maybe you just want to cut some things from the video from your video, you can use YouTube editor. Now YouTube editor does take a little bit of time to save your edits. It will save. However, it does take some time to do so. So just one warning or one piece of advice, it may take some time if you're editing it through YouTube um, for it to actually save your final product. Two other free tools to utilize is iMovie on a Mac and Movie Maker on PC. Um, both of these are really simple and easy editing tools to utilize. Uh, there's also several tutorials on YouTube that break down both of these platforms. So if you're unsure of how to do something on either one of them, there are so many tutorials available that break down how to add a title or how to crop something out, how to edit something. Um, iMovie in particular, you really can do actually a lot on iMovie. Um, so those are two really free, easy resources that you can utilize depending on the device that you have. So I wanted to take some time to uh, show a couple of examples of some videos just to get some ideas um, rolling for some of you guys um, and to show you what some other nonprofits have done. So let me share my audio and please let me know if you are unable to hear this video. Hi there, my name's Olivia and I work as a videographer for a nonprofit called One More Child. As you may have guessed, we're all about helping just one more child through things like foster care, child feeding programs, single moms, and so much more. As a big TikTok fan, I've been trying to convince my coworkers for months that TikTok could really help our organization. They finally let me download it during a big campaign we're doing called Journey to One Million Meals, where one dollar equals one meal. So now I'm asking for your help. My boss told me I could download TikTok if I made it my goal to get at least 20 donations given through TikTok. Let's prove the TikTok community can come together for good. Go to onemorechild.org slash meals to give now. And if you can't, could you like this video so more people could see it? Thanks for watching. Okay, I hope you were able to hear that audio. Um, but in that video, oh, um, please let me know if you were unable to hear that. But uh, this video is a really great example because in 44 seconds, she was able to get across um, what her organization name is, uh, what their mission is, what they're raising money for, and how donors can make a donation. Um, so she was able to do that in 44 seconds. Um, so video can also be a really great tool after a campaign has finished or during a campaign. So after that video, this videographer, she actually created a follow-up video um, where she shared some of the results from that video. So I'm gonna share with you that video right here. Hi TikTok, my name's Olivia and about two months ago my boss finally let me download TikTok for our nonprofit called One More Child. She challenged me to get at least 20 donations and in true TikTok form we raised over 10,000 meals for children and families in need. Many of you were still asking how you can help and honestly it's the same cost as a cup of coffee. Every year our organization hosts a diaper drive where we try to raise 1 million diapers to distribute to single mothers, foster parents, and families in need. We're already about halfway to our goal and we need your help to reach it. The small gift of $5 would roughly provide 25 diapers for a child. Click the link in our bio to give now. 
Like and comment if you can't donate. Let's get that TikTok algorithm going for a good cause. Unfortunately, apps like Venmo don't work with our nonprofit auditing requirements, but we're working as hard as we can to fix that. Thanks, everyone. So um, hopefully, again, you were able to hear that video. Um, so hopefully you were able to hear that video. But as you see in that follow up video, again, she had a really great call to action. Um, she said either people can donate, like or subscribe. She shared the impact of the video and she was able to do that all in 44 seconds. So that was through TikTok. You don't have to create your video through TikTok if you don't want to. Um, so I've created, I've um, set up another example to show you something completely different, um, an Instagram video. Um, they took a different approach, but still great and really gets the point across. I'm going to share that right now. So what I really love about that video is that, as you see, they're really using the tool of video to get across what they do as an organization and what their impact is, right? There weren't actually a lot of words. There was no voiceover. Um, it was really just the video of this woman dancing. Um, and you really got across in those minimal words what they do as an organization and also there was a clear link to where they can fundraise and the name of their organization. So that's really the goal of what you want to do. You really want to drive home what your organization does and you really want to utilize video as a different way of sharing that message and driving home that point to your donors. Um, and as you see with this video, super simple, not that complicated, something that anyone here can create. So I want to leave the rest of the time that we have to any questions that anyone has. I know there is already some questions. So I'm going to go ahead and bring those up. Okay, so let's see here. All right, so question. Uh, for nonprofits, what's the most essential way to get someone's attention? Um, definitely video is one way to get someone's attention. Um, that's why it's really a powerful tool to utilize. Um, and that's why we recommend, if you can, to create a video. Um, but in regards to getting someone's attention on a video, um, you just want to make sure that you have, uh, you know, really clear images. Again, some of the things we talked about in um, the video, there are things that can immediately take people away from watching a video, like a shaky camera, like bad audio. So if you have all of those things covered um, and it's a short video, it will keep someone's attention. So how long should our videos run? Would you recommend translating with captions or having a different video? for viewers of other languages? Um, that's a really great question. Um, so yes, I think if you can translate with captions, that's amazing. If your organization does work with um, specific communities that do speak another language, um, if that's also you, your donor base, if you are in a community with donors that speak a different language, I think that's a really great, um, I think that's a really great thing to incorporate. And you can do that with, any editing system you can, if you did use iMovie, you can actually add captions to your videos. So are all the editing apps you recommended free? Uh, most of them are free. Some have free and paid subscriptions. So 
The paid subscriptions will have obviously more features um, with Canva, for example, they have more um, stock images and videos. Actually, Canva Premium has an amazing stock video um, gallery. Uh, so even if for Giving Tuesday you want to um, uh, test out a Canva trial, they have actually a lot of videos that you can utilize on there if you want to insert images or videos into your own video. Um, okay, is there a certain video footage that you found to be the most or least effective? Um, least video footage. I mean, I think, like I mentioned, I just think there are certain things that will easily take people away from it, um, like light, bad lighting and bad audio are honestly, I think, two of the biggest things. Audio, I think, is the biggest. If you have bad audio, uh, immediately someone will click out of it. Um, and really what I mean by that is it that's really related to if you are recording a video and you're also recording audio for that video. So in that example, I showed you of that um, TikToker, she was a videographer, she was doing voiceover. So the audio was not bad because she was doing it through probably a headphone microphone afterwards. But if you are filming outside, you're really capturing a lot of unnecessary noise that isn't really great to the ear. So simple things like that will make your videos more effective. And again, also the length of the video. You can really make a powerful video in 30 seconds. Just like the example I showed you on Instagram, you can really drive home what the mission of your organization is in a short amount of time. You don't need a lot of words um, or video in general to really drive that home. Okay, so what types of footage have you found people respond to? B-roll, talking, action shots. Um, I think that varies. Um, I think that, um, yeah, I think it really depends. Um, I think all of them can actually really be powerful dependent on how they're done. So for example, people talking, um, that can be really powerful depending on what the person is saying, right? So if they're saying something that's concise and the audio is good, then it can be really powerful. Um, you know, if you are, um, for example, if you're an organization that works for children and um, parents have allowed you to film their children and incorporate that, that could be really powerful, again, if it's filmed correctly. Um, and that's really, I would say the most important thing is that there isn't really necessarily B-roll, action shots, people talking. That really doesn't matter as much as just the quality of that small, the, the small, you know, the small length of video that you're taking. Could you personally work with our nonprofit and what are your terms? Um, I cannot, but, uh, you know, as I mentioned, really utilize volunteermatch.org. Like I mentioned this webinar, I started volunteering for a nonprofit um, in my area because I wanted to, you know, support an organization I felt passionate about in our community and lend my skills. And you'd be surprised how many people who may be really invested in your cause would be willing to help. So, you know, reach out, put a post on volunteermatch.org. Also, another really great resource to consider is to reach out to your local high school or local university. There are a lot of budding filmmakers who want to just work on a project. They are working also on portfolios for film school um, or communication school. Um, that one extra help and working for a nonprofit, even if it's just for a, as a volunteer, can actually be really helpful for them and can also look great on their resume as well. So that's another option to consider is reaching out, put a post on a local university or reach out to your local high school or um, even middle school to see if um, someone, you know, if students are willing to um, provide support.
Um, yes, Paula um, has mentioned that 501c3s can get premium for free. Thank you so much for sharing that information. Um, if you are doing a slide type video with words on the screen, is there a recommended timing on how long that word should stay on the screen so that the video keeps moving but is readable? Um, I don't think there's necessarily a specific time length. I mean, I think that just test out the video yourself, like open it up and, and test it, like read it to yourself and see if you can read everything and you know, in one go. I've had times where I've created a video and I've realized that I've made it really too short that I'm reading it in my head much faster than someone who's never seen the words before be able to read it. So you just have to look at it a couple of times and think of, about it in a different perspective and also share with it with a partner that you have or a, a loved one or even someone at your organization. Ask them to check out the video, see if they can read it in the proper amount of time. Um, but I'm not sure if there's like a designated time, suggested time. Um, I think it just really depends on the text that you have and how long it is. Okay, I don't see any other questions coming in. Final, final ask for questions. I don't see any that are coming in. Um, so everything will be, uh, oh, I think there are some questions coming in through the chat. So let me quickly just go through that. Can we have a shorter and longer videos with the same content in YouTube? Will it be marked duplicate or spam? No, it won't be marked as duplicate. You could upload the same thing that you're uploading on Instagram to YouTube. Um, so you can feel free to, no, it won't be marked as duplicate or spam or anything. Um, um, well, the only way something is taken down on YouTube is, is if it's re uh, reported. Um, should we increase, should we focus on increasing subscribers or increasing views? That's a really great question. Um, and I would say that really depends on your individual organization and also what kind of content and engagement that you're currently having right now. So if you're really building YouTube, um, I would say, I would just say focus on the views right now. Um, now, it's kind of difficult to say, because I think at this point, like subscribers are also really great because those are people are gonna be invested. Um, I think really just focus on, uh, on creating the best content that you have and sharing that on every social media platform that you have. I, I think that's a, a difficult question to answer um, for nonprofits. Um, so let's see what else. Um, okay, I think uh, that's everything. So this video will also be sent out as a recording. So if you missed anything or you need a copy of it, we will be sending this out. Um, and I believe it might be added to the our Giving Tuesday toolkit. Um, Okay, oh, sorry, one more question before we go. What is Mighty Cause doing this year for Giving Tuesday? Uh, so every year we have a Giving Tuesday event where organizations can register for our Giving Tuesday event. We will have prizes. We have not announced that this year yet, um, but you can feel free to go to givingtuesday.com. Um, um, let me pull it up givingtuesday.mightycause.com. Um, you can head here and register for your nonprofit here and participate in our Giving Tuesday event. Um, we have a whole toolkit with other resources like social media templates and social media guides and email templates, all that good stuff that will help with your marketing strategy. Um, so feel free to check us out there. Um, yes, you can register right now. You can register today. It's really easy and simple process. So just head to givingtuesday.mightycause.com and you can register right now. And 
um, get ready for Giving Tuesday. Um, so uh, as I mentioned, we'll be sending this recording out. Um, if anyone is planning on making a video after this, please tag Mighty Cause because we love reposting videos of nonprofits that have made videos. It's a great joy that we have <laughs> in our Slack of seeing everyone's videos and we love reposting them on our social. So please tag us and we will reshare them or repost them to our stories. Um, and I'm so excited to see everyone's videos. I hope you feel inspired. I hope this was a little bit helpful for everyone. Um, and if you have any follow-up questions about anything that we've spoken about, please reach out to support at mightycause.com. Again, support at mightycause.com and we're more than happy to help answer any questions that you have. All right, well, thank you so much for joining us today. I hope it was helpful and I hope you have a great rest of your week. Thank you so much.